Back in January, I released two videos at the exact same time. One with bad news, and one with good news. The bad news was that my province of Franciscans had decided to withdraw our commitment from the University of Georgia, meaning that, come June, I'd be out of a job. The good news as a result was that I'd have a little time for transition, and would be able to go on a major speaking tour across the country. Within a month, I'd lined up 26 stops set to cover 14,000 miles this summer. As it turns out though, it seems that all I really had that day was bad news. Yes, with the coronavirus outbreak still at large, traveling this summer is just not going to be possible. Going in and out of airports, traveling from city to city, would have put me at a high risk of becoming infected, meaning that I'd be a potential carrier to thousands in the church, many of which, let's be honest, are over the age of 65. I informed each of the parishes this week that the tour was officially canceled. Naturally, this has made the question, what's next, all the more pressing. Because as of now, without any summer plans, I'm quickly approaching a period of homelessness. The new priests are moving in, which means I gotta find a place to live. So where's that gonna be? Well, it's complicated. You see, assignments are given out every three years after what is called a chapter, an official meeting of all the brothers in the province. It's a time to catch up with one another, to dream about the future, propose legislation, and most importantly, to elect new leadership. Council members are elected every chapter, provincial every other chapter, and their first order of business is to meet for a week immediately after chapter and give new assignments to everyone. Originally, our chapter was planned for the first week of June, meaning that I would have a new assignment by the second week of June. No worries. But originally, we hadn't planned on a global pandemic. As of now, the chapter has been indefinitely postponed, with the hope that it will take place sometime around September, but we're still working out those details. For now, the Provincial and Council will give me a temporary assignment, a place to live so I'm not actually homeless, but it's just that, temporary. Whenever the chapter does happen, all previous assignments will be dissolved and new ones will need to be given out. The reason the Provincial can't just give me a new permanent assignment now is because, as it turns out, this is one of those every other chapter scenarios where we could potentially vote in a new Provincial. I doubt we actually will, the current guy is pretty well liked, but that's not the point. The point is that we could, and so no guarantee about reassignment can be given now because, who knows, a completely different Provincial and Council could decide otherwise. So to recap, my current job is quickly coming to an end. The two-month, 14,000-mile speaking tour I'd planned for the summer is now canceled. I'm going to get a temporary assignment sometime, and then in the future, I might be told to stay where I am, or I might be told to go somewhere else. Splendid. And so here I sit, like the vast majority of the world, not knowing what the future brings. We talk a lot these days about when things go back to normal, but we don't know when that will be or what it'll even look like when it does. Millions of people are worried about their jobs. Schools aren't even sure if they're gonna open in the fall. The NFL is pretending like the season is gonna go on just like normal, but really, who knows? For someone like myself, this is the most agonizing type of torture. I'm the type of person that is always looking ahead, always planning, always imagining what'll come next. The future gives me hope and inspiration, it fuels my ambition to work harder in the present. What do you do when you don't have a future? In the video that I made at the start of the quarantine, I addressed how, in situations like this, we have a tendency to wallow in the past, to list all the things we don't get to do anymore and obsess about them until there's no life left in us. Six weeks ago, that was definitely the problem I faced more than anything. But now, having been in quarantine for this time, I find myself shifting to the other end of the spectrum. As the future becomes more and more uncertain, my days are increasingly spent fantasizing about the future, planning things that may or may not even be possible, fixating on details that have no grounding in reality. In both of these common responses, wallowing in the past or fantasizing about the future, what we do is seek an escape. We look at the world around us, freak out a bit, and decide to hide from it. Which is comforting at first, don't get me wrong, but it's a strategy that will never bring us real happiness. What I hope we all come to realize in this pandemic, something that I've struggled with my entire life, is that the past is always gone and the future is always an illusion. As helpful as it is to learn from the past and as much as we should practically plan for the future, the fact of the matter is that neither the past nor the future exist. All we have is the present. The more time we spend thinking about something that doesn't exist, escaping to it, living in it, 
is time spent not experiencing the living and true God right here, right now. The beauty of the incarnation is that God didn't just exist in the past 2,000 years ago, nor are we prevented from experiencing him until we arrive in heaven sometime in the future. More primarily than anything else, God exists in the present moment, wherever you are. The living and true God, the one who created and redeemed the universe, is accessible to you in this very moment, calling out to you, reaching out to touch you. The silver lining about having a completely undetermined future is that we are left with nothing but the present. The fact that I have no idea where I'll be or what I'll be doing in two months means that all I can truly focus on is where I am right now. What do I need to do today? Who needs my help today? What is God trying to say to me today? We may not know our future, and that may cause a few of us to freak out. Just remember what Jesus said. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for a day is its own evil. Tomorrow will come, tomorrow. And when it does, God will be with us, helping us to face the day. But until then, you've got today. You've got an opportunity to live with God. Don't waste today worrying about tomorrow.